The internet is full of advice about becoming fat adapted. Train fasted, avoid carbs, try keto. But many of these miss the point entirely and are actually putting your training and your health at risk. In this video, we're gonna go through a deep dive on fat burning and the science might surprise you. If you're new here, then hey, I'm James and I'm a registered sports and exercise nutritionist. I work with amateur and pro triathletes to help them train and race better, recover faster, and do all of this in a healthy and sustainable way. Today, we're gonna go through one of the most misunderstood topics in endurance nutrition, fat adaptation. I have had so many comments on my channel about this over time. Some just curious questions and some people telling me how my advice on pushing carbohydrates is wrong. But here's the truth. I'm not just an eat carbs all the time kind of guy. I'm an eat the right carbs at the right time person. Because at the end of the day, my role as a registered nutritionist is to keep my athletes safe and push performance. And if there are strategies that help me do both of those things, then I'm game. And so I am super keen on this topic because it does have potential. Before we get into that though, let's start with what we actually know about fat adaptation. Your body is constantly using a mix of both fat and carbohydrates for fuel. Think of it like a car that can switch between electric and gas power. The proportion of each fuel source depends on various factors like your diet and how hard you're exercising. During lower intensity exercise, you're primarily burning fat. And as intensity increases, you shift more towards using carbohydrates. This is simply because fat metabolism is slower and requires more oxygen than carbohydrates to create energy. Fat is fantastic for long, steady efforts, but can't keep up when you need quick energy. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Your body can get better at burning fat and carbohydrates, and this is what we call metabolic flexibility. And yes, training in a fasted state or with low carbohydrate availability can improve your capacity to burn fat. This is actually well documented in the research. Studies show that when you train with low carb availability, you increase various enzymes and proteins involved in fat metabolism. In theory, this sounds great, but here's the catch. And this is where most triathletes get it wrong. While you might get better at burning fat, you simultaneously decrease your ability to use carbohydrates effectively. It's like making your hybrid car to be really efficient with electricity, but making the gas engine less powerful. This becomes a problem because even in an Ironman, carbohydrates are still a crucial fuel source and a limiting factor. In fact, we know that the fastest long distance triathletes aren't necessarily the ones who can burn the most fat. They're the ones who can process and use high amounts of carbohydrates. Even at Ironman pace, you're still working at an intensity where carbohydrates provide a significant portion of your energy. And because you only have enough carbohydrates stored after a proper carb loading protocol for about 90 minutes of hard, steady exercise, this can be a significant limiting factor to race performance. This is why the pros are pushing as many carbs as possible during races, not trying to minimize them. Now, you might have heard about strategies like train high, sleep low, a protocol that's gotten a lot of attention in the endurance world, and it is a fascinating idea. The basic premise is to manipulate your carbohydrate availability across different training sessions with the aim of harnessing your body's natural ability to more effectively burn fat or carbs. You start with an evening session where you're fully fueled with carbohydrates. That's the train high part. This is usually something like a high intensity interval session where you want maximum performance. Then instead of replenishing your carbohydrate stores after that session, you deliberately keep them low. You might have a low carb dinner or even skip the carbs entirely. And this creates a situation where your muscle glycogen is depleted and it's the sleep low part. The next morning, you train in this glycogen depleted state. The session is performed at a lower intensity, like an easy run or ride. The theory is that this combination creates a stronger stimulus for adaptation, particularly for fat metabolism and mitochondrial development. I've actually used this approach myself and with some of the triathletes that I've worked with. And yes, there is some evidence supporting it. A few studies have shown improvements in performance and fat oxidation rates. But what people don't talk about enough is that the research is mixed. Some studies show benefits, others don't. 
And importantly, it's incredibly easy to get this protocol wrong. If you're not careful about your overall nutrition, you could end up with chronically low carbohydrate intake, which is not the point of it. And you can devastate your training quality and recovery. Think about it. You're potentially compromising two training sessions instead of one. The evening training session might suffer because you've restricted carbs too heavily, and the morning session is obviously going to be challenging with low glycogen stores. And while we're talking about nutritional strategies for fat adaptation, we need to address the elephant in the room, the good old ketogenic diet. This is probably the most extreme approach to improving fat metabolism, and I get questions about this all the time. The ketogenic diet involves drastically reducing carbohydrates, usually to less than 20 grams of carbs per day, while increasing fat intake significantly. This forces your body to primarily use fat and ketones for fuel. And here's the thing, it absolutely works for increasing fat metabolism. The research is crystal clear on this. When you follow a ketogenic diet properly, your body becomes much, much better at burning fat for fuel. But remember what we talked about earlier, there's always a trade-off. Just like with our other strategies, as you enhance fat metabolism, you simultaneously downgrade your body's ability to use carbohydrates effectively. Your body literally reduces the enzymes needed for carbohydrate metabolism. This becomes a real problem for triathletes because you need carbohydrates for high intensity performance and this is also undisputed in the research. Whether it's those crucial intervals in training, responding to surges in a race or pushing through the final miles of a run, those higher intensity efforts rely heavily on carbohydrate metabolism. So while you might become a great fat burner, you're essentially putting a governor on your high-end performance, which for most people is going to impair overall training and racing potential. Now, in the interest of being completely transparent, I should mention that there are some athletes who've had success with low-carb approaches, particularly in ultra-endurance events. There are examples of athletes performing well on ketogenic diets, and some athletes report feeling better overall, more stable energy levels, fewer stomach issues, better mental clarity. These experiences shouldn't be dismissed. They're valid and they show that nutrition isn't always a one-size-fits-all approach. But what's crucial to understand is that these are the minority, and this is shown in the research. When we look at studies investigating this, most athletes get worse when they follow ketogenic diets. Their performance decreases and their race times suffer as a result. But it wouldn't be fair to say that this happens with everyone. Even in the same study, you'll usually get a few athletes who actually improve their performance. Now, one of the things which people routinely talk about within this whole fat metabolism debate is the timing and duration of nutritional protocols like the keto diet. While dietary changes like going keto can increase fat oxidation in just a few days, the adaptations we truly want from training take much longer. We're talking weeks or months of consistent work. And the research here is particularly interesting. Studies show that well-trained endurance athletes naturally have higher fat oxidation rates compared to untrained individuals, regardless of their diet. And this happens through consistent training over time, not through dietary manipulation. But one of the things I commonly hear is that if you just stick to the low carb long enough, your body will fully adapt. While there is some truth to long-term adaptations, the research consistently shows that high intensity performance capabilities remain compromised. Even in studies lasting several months, athletes on ketogenic diets still show reduced ability to perform high intensity efforts. And that's because you just can't overcome the natural physiology in that carbohydrate metabolism is always going to be more efficient than fat. And fat always requires oxygen to metabolize, meaning it can't be used for those times when you're really working hard. Now, before we move on, if you're interested in improving your nutrition, then you can check out my free fueling guide for triathletes. This will help you perfect what to eat before, during and after training and take the confusion out of it. Link is in the comments and description of this video. So what's the actual answer? How do you become better at burning fat while maintaining high performance? The solution is actually much simpler. And it's something that the best long distance triathletes have known for years, consistent training over time. And this is what I focus on with the triathletes that I work with. Instead of forcing their body into fat adaptation through restrictive eating patterns, 
we prioritize building consistent training volume over time, getting their easy sessions truly easy and fueling appropriately for different training intensities. And what's fascinating is that when you do this right, you naturally become better at burning fat without compromising your ability to use carbohydrates. It's like upgrading both the electric and gas systems in your hybrid car. So how do you apply this? Here's the framework I use with triathletes. For easy sessions, so zone two sessions, you can get away with lower carbohydrate intake, around 30 grams per hour, because you're naturally using more fat for fuel. For moderate to high intensity sessions, fuel properly with carbohydrates to support quality training. Focus on building your aerobic base through consistent training, rather than trying to force adaptation through nutrition. Ensure your daily diet supports training and recovery. This means adequate carbohydrates and calories. The ability to burn fat efficiently is important for endurance performance, but the path for getting there isn't through restrictive eating or fancy protocols. It's through consistent training, proper fueling, and patience. This approach might not be as exciting as the latest fat burning hack you saw on YouTube, but it's what actually works. And more importantly, it's sustainable. If you want to learn more about how to fuel your training properly, check out this video on what to eat before training. It will help you to understand exactly how to fuel well before training so that you get the most out of it.